This section assumes you've successfully got the first master node working and are looking to now add subsequent master nodes. The first step involves creating a folder for your new master node. During the next step, we will copy the ZOSD file, which is the ZOS application executable file, from its current location to the user local bin. This will give us the ability to run the ZOSD application from anywhere within the shell. You do an ls-a to confirm that the file is there. Now we will create the Zeos configuration file. You can edit the notepad file and then copy and paste the configuration. The RPC port is unique to each master node and it is not the IP address port. You can assign it any random number. This is the IP address port. It is the port that is configured in the firewall and is also unique to each master node running on the VPS. In our previous example, we used port 9000 for the first master node. So we will use 9001 for this one. Again, the RPC port is a different number altogether. Copy and paste. Colon W to save the changes and colon Q to quit. Next, we are going to start the Zeos application on the second master node. Each master node has a unique configuration and that configuration file is saved in the specific case in the .zeos1 folder. Each subsequent master node will have a .zeos2, .zeos3, so on and so forth, with a unique configuration file in each folder. Once you've confirmed that the server is started, Go ahead and use the get mining info command to check on the status of the blockchain sync. Now we will generate the private key for this specific master node.
We'll go back and edit the configuration file with additional information about the master node address, the private key, etc. colon W to write changes, colon Q to quit. Now we will go ahead and restart the Zeos application services. During this step, we will configure the VPS firewall. To allow specific access on the port we set up for the master node. The source is anywhere. Once you've added the rule, you'll notice that you now have a rule for the previous monster node that you set up, which was port 9000, and the new one, which is 9001. Now we will configure the Windows Wallet. Go ahead and create a new address for the monster node you will set up. In this case, we will use monster node 02. Go ahead into the Inputs tab for Coin Control and transfer exactly 1,000 coins from your primary wallet to the secondary master node address you set up. Once the transactions are fully confirmed, you can go back into the Inputs button and see individual balances for each one of your wallet addresses. Now we will gather the master note information. and we will create the second master node just as we did the first one. The private key we generated from the VPS server in the previous steps. The IP address and port number of the VPS server we configured in the firewall. And we're going to need to generate a transaction ID for this master node as well. You'll notice that you have a previous transaction ID, and that was specific to the previous master node we set up. The reward address is a standard reward address we set up in the previous step.
and we will go ahead and create the master node now. Once you click OK, you need to go ahead and click the Update button. It isn't unusual to see not in the master node list when you first set up a new master node. You can go ahead and restart the master node. Click Update. And you can also confirm that the master node has joined the network by locating it in the Network Explorer and confirming that it has the status 1, which is an active status. At this point, you have completed all the steps necessary to set up a secondary master node.